All right. We are live with the Dev Talk Show here on May 13th, 2020. Uh, hopefully everybody can join us and, and catch us either here on Twitch or YouTube. And, you know, if you're watching in the future in YouTube, then then thanks for uh, checking this uh, this show out where we are going to learn about Jupyter Notebooks available to you on Azure. So first of all, let me just uh, introduce the co-hosts, Andy Schwamm and Rich Ross. And thanks to both of you for getting things set up. And we, you know, we had a couple of technical difficulties tonight, but here we are. Not not too much later. And so um, as you can see below me, our very special guest, uh, Sarah Dukevich is here. And we are going to hear all about what uh, what on Azure is called Azure Notebooks. Mm -hmm. But um, which my understanding is, is it's a great way. It's a it's a great tool to either learn languages or, or maybe do some data science or even to teach seminars. But I that's kind of all I know about it. So I've, I've seen the back of the t-shirt, but I don't know what's in the brochure. So Sarah, tell us about Azure Notebooks. The back of the t-shirt. I love it. So Azure Notebooks, um, I guess I should take a step back and yeah. say, um, so Notebooks in general, Azure Notebooks, um, there are a couple other websites. These are cloud hosted Jupyter Notebooks. Okay. So I guess to give you an idea of what Jupyter Notebooks are, um, think of it as the ability to write Markdown and write code in the same document, and the code is live. Oh. Uh, I, I actually have some slides here. I can show you some more information about Azure Notebooks. Yeah, Not just awesome. show, but there's some interactivity in these slides, too. All right. Rich, do you want to bring up? Uh... Yep, he'll bring, he's bringing it up, I think. There's machine. Yeah, we're working on it. It's fine. <laughs> We're good. So here we are, we're in four different places, and thanks to technology, we're able to come together and look like we're all coordinated. And mm. and uh, it's pretty amazing stuff, though, right? We can share uh, Sarah's screen, we could share Andy's if we wanted to. He's playing Minesweeper or something, I think. Minesweeper, uh, again? Andy, oh, I come know. on, I'm man. I'm an addict, I can't, I can't quit. <sighs> Are we seeing? Okay. Oh, there we Here go. Here it comes. There it is. All right. All right. So, All right, Azure so, Notebook Adventures. Cool. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, let me show you something before I get too carried away with this. Behind the scenes, I'm working in Azure Notebooks. Oh, it looked like a PowerPoint. <laughs> it looked like a PowerPoint, but it wasn't. So yeah, that's cool. So my slides are being shown from an Azure Notebook, from a Jupyter Notebook specifically. Um, and we'll talk about that feature too. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Oh, this is, yeah. the more I play with Jupyter Notebooks and Azure Notebooks, the more excited I get and the more I'm like, I gotta tell people about this. Yeah. Better yet, I gotta show people this. So, um, and what I have here, this is nothing more than a markdown cell. If I mm. double click on it, ta-da, there's my markdown. <laughs> nothing special. Uh, yes, that's a table with some markdown nested in the table tags. Hmm. Wow. But this is, yeah. So say, simple. Yeah, there's nothing really weird under the covers. I promise you that's just markdown in HTML for that. Um, but yeah, I want to do a shout out. Thanks to you guys for having me in stage three who pays the bills and keeps me <laughs> busy with playing with data stuff. I love it. Um, Project Jupyter, Jupyter Notebooks are what we're actually looking at, and Azure Notebooks, which is the particular cloud-hosted environment that we're working in. All right. Do you guys know what this, what these hats are from? Hmm. They Not look, me. They look like they look very cute. They look almost very like cute. a Nintendo game. Almost like a Nintendo yeah. game. <laughs> Could be onto something there. Um, so this, these are the hats from Animal Crossing. I don't have the game yet, mostly because ah. I can't play my Nintendos because my boys are playing Breath of the Wild right now. Uh, well. <sighs> yeah. But um, I have a data set tonight that's going to be working with Animal Crossing data. Oh, cool. Yeah. Now, Animal Crossing is is once you get into it, I, I'm not sure if you've played a previous one in the series, is there will be many hours lost to Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that. Um. So Stardew Valley's been my time sink lately. Oh, wow, yes. Stardew Valley's <laughs> another one. So you like time sink games. You're a little like me then. <laughs> uh, when I was younger, I invested a lot of time in Chrono Trigger. So, yes. <laughs> that, 
That's awesome. All right. So yeah, so these are all available in Animal Crossing. Cool. And this is all just data. Yeah. Again, nothing special. But what was nice is that I used a Python script to generate that. Oh, okay. I'll bring up my Animal Crossing notebook. I'm not going to get into this data because I have slides for those. But just so you can see, like many developers, and let me zoom that up a little bit. I mean, I have a for loop like back. I have a for loop right here. Yeah. And I'm just basically looping through a collection and saying, get me the URL, get me the name, and up with this HTML that I then copied and pasted into another cell. So this is in a, a notebook. This is in and a separate notebook, correct. This is what I was, so I was just playing with the data set, depending on what I could see, figured, okay, what do I want to show you guys? And so I just wrote a simple for loop to loop through my data collection and get the URL and names of things and generate the HTML. And then I copied this and I pasted it into the cell, which is how this got generated. Yeah, and you didn't need you didn't need the Python SDK locally. You didn't no. need to like create a project or or put it like if you were in C sharp, you'd have to put it in a class, which I know you don't have to do in Python. Um, but then, no, you you can do object oriented in Python, yeah. but for Jupyter notebooks, you typically yeah, aren't you going to wrote, be building class and stuff. You just wrote a line of code. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> and like I said, I use that to generate the HTML for this slide. But yeah, it's there's there's code and there's presentation and how does this all work? Yeah, that's why I was like, this is cool. I got to show you guys more of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's cool. So. So exactly, like like you showed there, is you just went into a notebook, wrote a line of code, and boom, you had something to paste in and make that previous yeah. slide without all kinds of investment. So pretty cool. All right. And that and look at, I mean, it's just what one, two, three, four lines of code. Yeah. And it doesn't really have to be that way, but for simplicity's sake, I like storing my values separately and then using the string template. So. Wow. Okay. Cool. <laughs> So yeah, so why has your notebooks? Yeah. That's cool. It's it's like almost like a dynamic slide deck. Also, like not that it's made for slide decks, right? It I is. mean, I think there's <laughs> a bit more you can do with it than that. Yeah. But I've never written like code behind my slide deck, you know, which is kind right. of right. That's for me, I find the tools and then like how can I use them? I've done a PowerShell presentation with zero slides and a custom PowerShell module and just ran with that. Um, now nice. I can do Azure Notebooks where I'm like, look, here's the presentation. And oh, yeah, by the way, this is an Azure Notebook as well. <laughs> and I just go, boom. So no, yeah, it's interesting. It's... Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting that your slide says F sharp because just a couple weeks ago, uh, we had an F sharp show with uh, Stashu Korik. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I remember, so I'm, I'm kind of curious how this fits together and I can't wait to hear more about it, is that when he was working with F sharp, he kept going down to the REPL, F sharp mm -hmm. interactive to experiment. So does that, and I know Python has a REPL. I'm mm -hmm. not too familiar with R. I mean, I kind of know what it is, but again, <laughs> not too familiar. So is it something that's great for languages that have that REPL interactive uh, yeah. environment? Okay. So let's, I'm going to come back. I keep coming back here. So this is notebooks.azure.com. Okay. And I'm logged in on my Microsoft account. And I have a specific folder for tonight's show. And let me see how does how does this look for you guys? Can you see it okay? The folder structure? Yeah, that's not bad. So I mean think of this layout similar to like GitHub where you have a README file. And then I create my I store my data in a data folder. I store my images in an images folder just for sanity's sake. Um, because if I have a lot of images that I want to show, or if I have a lot of CSV files, like one of my projects has, I think, 10 CSV files in it, um, put it in a data folder. Don't clutter the main folder. Right. So if I come into Azure Notebooks and come up to the far right here where it says new, I can then say I want a new notebook. This is what Azure Notebook supports. So Azure Notebook supports Python 2.7, uh, 3.5, 3.6, R, and F sharp. Now I need to caution anybody who's watching right now, Python 2.7 no longer supported. End of life. 
Um, it got sunsetted this year. They had their last update here in April. The 2-7 two, two line is dead. So if you can get out of that, stay away from it. <laughs> so someone should tell them to update this UI and not make that the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. so Ju- Jupiter Notebook, so Jupiter, the name itself, is a, a mix of three languages that started in there, and that was Julia, it was Python, and it was R. Hmm. Together oh, that made up the that. Jupiter name. I was wondered what that was. You well, know, that makes too much sense. It wasn't just that Jupiter spelled that way was available as the domain name. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's 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 why I make all my sense. decisions, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a domain name available. Yes, wait. Oh, um, yeah, but so yeah, Pyth- Python two seven was one of those where the community was stuck into two X for quite a while. Um, so I can understand why it was there, but at this point that can probably get phased out since it's sunsetted. The community no longer even wants to support it, so. Hmm. Um, but then, yeah, Python 3.5, Python 3.6, R, F-sharp. Um, there are other language kernels. I have a slide for that as well. But just so you can see, when you create a notebook, I can say, okay, maybe I want to create an F-sharp notebook. Now, I haven't done F-sharp before, so I'm just going to say uh, F-sharp test, just so we can see how it starts. I think Statue's uh, in the chat, so he can always uh, jump in if, <laughs> if we get into trouble. I think I saw him. Yeah, I, I saw Statue.net talking about bands not getting gigs. Yeah, that was good. Oh, yeah, that was, pretty, that was pretty good. Good geek joke right there. Uh, see, this is where, I, at this point, I would lose it. I'd have to look up and see. So what is the F-sharp uh, Jupyter Notebook extension? That one I don't know. Or notebook uh, file extension. No, I love how how we can just live. We can just say, "Hey, let's go get the answer to this." Yeah, <laughs> and I wanted to make sure it's not like IPy and and be for all the things. Uh, but just to make sure. Yeah, that looks like a good one right there. Using F Sharp for Jupyter notebooks. Jupyter notebooks from the F Sharp Foundation seems legit. Getting started, I'll bet. I don't know. Just a guess. Yeah. Where's the... I see getting started down in a second. Oh, but maybe, no, you're right. You're in the top section. I was in the top. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. What does it say? We're just winging it along here, huh? It's one of those. It's like, I don't know the extension on it. Scroll through. Sample uh, at notebooks. Maybe these will tell us their extension. You think it would be like, yeah... Yeah, I'm not. At the bottom, this. there was a link that said "Create your notebook on your machine" or something like that. I wonder if that would take you yeah, to the instructions. Create your that one right there. Yeah. Let's see what it says. Blah blah. Anaconda. Oh, I think that's Anaconda. to make it all bring it all local, right? Uh, right. Which yeah. I do. I have Jupyter installed locally. Okay. I don't have the F Sharp kernel though, so that's why I'm like. Well, we don't need to do that, right? Yeah. But, but yeah, you can call so you can create whatever it is. I'm gonna try it. IPy NB. Okay. If it doesn't work. We'll see. Okay, F sharp. Maybe it doesn't care what the extension is. Maybe Not I don't know. And then whatever hello world is, I don't know F sharp enough. Well, right. we can we can go and do some Python. It's it's yeah. Cool. yeah. Let's do Python. Python's cool. Well, actually, I want to go back. Can I show you guys the rest of the presentation? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Please. Because yeah, you're in charge. <laughs> I don't want to be in charge. It means decisions get made, man. Okay. Um, so why Azure Notebooks? We've looked at the, this is a presentation that's actually in Azure Notebooks. Um, when I take notes, so let me go back in here, go up a project. So learning Python for the 10 billionth time, it's a, always an on again, off again, because I usually live in C-sharp land or JavaScript land. So when I go back to Python, it's been months. Um, I'll come up to something like this and say, okay, let's go to Coding Bat. Coding Bat's a website that has like examples for you to do exercises with. Okay. So I'm going to open up that notebook and you can see I've already gone through and said, okay, let's grab the contents for whatever the exercise is. And then this is the code. Now I can come up here to kernel. I'm going to, no, not kernel, sorry. I'm going to clear all the outputs just so you can see that when I run this code, 
So I could type something in here like print even uh, it is a weekday and it is we're on vacation. But notice I can run the cell and there's all the output from the interpreter right here. Oh, that is yeah, cool. I saw it change as you were typing. Like, you know, if you look mm -hmm. closely, like it, it, you know, it, it was quick. It's like while you were typing it. Yeah. So let me zoom in a little bit more yeah. so you can see. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So this is the code cell itself. And then the output comes right outside the cell. And I can run each of these individually, or I can come up here and I can say run all. So to run all the cells that I have in here. So so each cell, if mm -hmm. you put like a print, it's going to just put it like right in that section below hand. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Or if, even if I do something like the, the classic calculator example, I don't know why we do this with languages, but we do anyhow. Let's do two yeah. plus two. So it automatically outputs the output, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because Python's one of those, it's got an interpreter. So the interpreter will be like, okay, what did you tell me to do? Okay. The other thing yeah. to know with Python is it's white space sensitive, which, oh, it's tough. I miss my curly braces. <laughs> oh, really? It's like YAML. Oh, not YAML, not YAML, not YAML. I just compared <laughs> Python to YAML, by the way. Let's just keep oh, no. that in mind. So now, so that means, so we've just lost all the Python viewers. They're never right. right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, And exactly. why did Sarah just fall off the call? Yeah. yeah. No respect whatsoever. It's like, no so respect. Something I see interesting here is that the input and output cells have a number. So are you mm -hmm. able to, in later code, refer back to to output? So that part I haven't played enough with, okay. but the output and the input, they match like 33. Yeah. This is its right. input, this is its out. Yep. So when they get separated, like this guy doesn't have its out number, mm. but if it, it ran it, then you would see it there. So okay. when you, when it runs all, it usually comes down and it will do the out, but it doesn't always do all of the outs. As you can see, as I scroll through, scrolling back up. So I can didn't see, get yeah, I can see where you're coming from, where the, this mixing of markdown with code cells. Yeah. Is, is and, I, I'm, and, I, and I'm assuming this is when you pulled this from coding bat. It's there providing you a, uh, a, a uh, here, tutorial, an exercise right in a box here. Oh, no. So this is me creating my Jupyter Notebook. I'll show you the Coding Bat site. The Coding oh, Bat okay. site is just, I mean, they've got Java warmups and Python warmups. And then I come oh, I here. Get. and You're so just I, implementing uh, it. But you're yeah, using so I would just okay. copy this into my Jupyter yeah. Notebook, and then I would paste it. Okay. Rather than having to run it here, I have it in my Jupyter Notebook. Right. Okay. Okay. And so then I can come back here and go, okay, how do I do this for strings? How do I do this? And what's nice is I, I just did control click. So this is going to open it in another window and drop right straight to strings. Hmm. Okay. Um, this feels in some way like I'm getting like this GitHub kind of vibe as if yeah. I were to try and go to, uh, you know, this link. Mm -hmm. That I would, I don't know exactly how it works, but I'm I'm getting the feeling that this is very shareable. It is very shareable. We didn't even talk about this beforehand, but it, it sounds like you've got good ideas as to where this is going. Um, no. So <laughs> just watching, that's all. <laughs> that is awesome. So I can come into here, and you can upload Git, uh, GitHub repos into okay. here if you really want to. But I can come into the Dev Talk Show, and I could change my project settings uh, and this is a public project okay so you could go to notebooks.azure.com sudoki's project the dev talk show and i can copy and paste that into twitch for you because i have yeah, to look at open. that and there's a clone button hack, right honestly. there exactly and a, and a star button so it's very like if you just kind of get that i just kind of got that github vibe like look at absolutely. this absolutely Absolutely. So you've got all that kind of thing going on. You could clone it. I'm going to go ahead and delete well, this guy. Well, does GitHub have the, does this have the GitHub vibe or does, does GitHub have the notebook vibe? <laughs> no, yeah. wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So GitHub actually does have some no notebook rendering support in it. I say some because sometimes I'm like, you didn't do my numbers right. And then I'm like, ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> but um, you could put your Jupyter Notebooks up in GitHub and it will attempt to render it. Neat. 
That's yeah. Neat. Yeah. So it's like a read me right in with the code, which I always thought was like a really cool aspect of these kind of things. You know, it's all just like built in together. And look, I even have a read me with resource links for you guys for after the show. Nice. Well, we're going to share that. Well, you just yeah, did share really that, good. I guess. I just did that's really cool. Yeah, live. Why so, wait? So anybody here could clone this and they could build on what you're doing. Yep. Um, so again, a perfect, you know, as, 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 and I know one of the things you like to do because you introduced me to it was, um, you know, work with local community groups, especially youth, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, uh, Sarah introduced me to the idea of NASA space apps, which yes. we took to a local school district around here. So, you know, that was awesome. And, and I was super appreciative of that. But who and introduced feel, you to that? Sarah did. Who's Sarah? Uh, Saduki, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> no, it's true. And what I like is uh, is that it seems like this would be a good way for you to, to not just keep notes, but to have interactive tutorials for the students. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's good for teaching. Um, I like it for teaching. I like for learning. Okay. I like yeah. it for the interactive languages. Python, I did some R, but I can't find any of my R notebook, notebooks at the moment. So I went through Data Camp to do their R programmer and Python programmer tracks just to get myself back into data again. And I loved it, every minute of it. And that's where I learned more about Jupyter Notebooks. And it's good for well, showing data results. Well, Bruno MVP says super cool. So we're getting props from the, uh, from the viewers. Hey, so, Bruno. Uh, so thanks for uh, giving us a little feedback there. It's always good to hear. So something else with this slide. So Jupyter Notebooks uses something called the Rise Slideshow. Oh, OK. So you've been seeing me go left and right, but I can actually go down and up as well. Check this uh, out. Wait, what? Oh, nice. Just went down. This is a slide slide of the Y Edge Notebook slide. Okay, okay. So that was slide. in the lower right. You had controls there. Yeah, okay. I have controls there. And you can use keyboards, but I'm using the mouse so that you guys can actually see these features a little bit in action. Yeah, that helps. But yeah, okay. I can go up and then I can go back down and look. This is the Rise slideshow. And so Microsoft does have a link. If I click on that, notice my slideshow is still running, but I can open up another window or another tab. Yep. yep. So it's helpful for presentations like that where you're like, I want to show them this website. Yeah. Like, and boom, it just clicks there. And yep. it's not it's not like when you're using another full screen presentation product that You'd click, you you know, you got to exit full screen and go find the browser and click out to it. Like it just boom, right? Right there. Pretty and that's cool. part of why I'm also not doing right, this in Chris. full screen. Chris is taking shots. Chris is taking shots at PowerPoint. We all know about <laughs> that problem, Chris. <laughs> no, that's what that's what control windows left and right is for. You've already yeah. heard that, seen that for me. But yeah. that's another, that's going to be another show. So <laughs> that'll be awesome. Actually, I think which we've already done, if I remember correctly, I think we did that show. So <laughs> where we talked, did some presentation tips and I, uh, I talked about that. So I like that. So you could go. I mean, it's not not just because of like, you know, the cool factor of up and down. It's that that as slides are going, sometimes sometimes uh, uh, trains of thought are T-shaped where, yes, you're mm -hmm. going from left to right. But let's drill down a little bit. And, and that's depending. what I'm, yeah, doing. yeah, because I mean, exactly the next slide, done. I talk about how is this good for note taking, because it's got the ability to do this. And I love this. So this particular notebook is a Python notebook, just because that's what I've been working on a lot lately. So if you're not familiar with the Python community or the language or the way they do things, the first command anybody should learn is import this. Okay. Uh, let's see, I come up on Twitch so you guys can see. Uh, when I showed you the slide, it looked pretty normal, but then when I clicked in, it noticed that I have a cursor. These aren't right. boring slides, these are active, yeah. interactive slides. And I can tell it go ahead and run. Are you not going to run for me this time? <laughs> you can try to tell it to go ahead and run. No, I like this, this idea though, because now just right in the middle, you, you don't even leave the flow of the slides. No, and normal for us notebooks. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like you know those gremlins. Yeah, I remember those gremlins? Slide. Yeah. Okay. It Bye. only runs when you're streaming on Mixer. <laughs> Since Mixer's down. It's... <laughs> Since Mixer's so it... down. Yeah. Okay. So what this should do? 
Let me do Maybe I it'll just have... work again if you go out and back. Yeah, I can go back and see if this is just being finicky because it might be. Let me go into here. Uh, so if I type import this, I am, since the slide doesn't want to work, there we go. At least my okay. other notebook. Yeah, works. nice. So what does that mean, this? Import this. <laughs> that is a question we ask all the time in our languages. Is, what is this? Yeah, it's is just this like a JavaScript, JavaScript thing? thing? Yeah. <laughs> or is this the C-sharp properties, this, where we're right. setting that? Um, so this, I'm not really too sure how to describe this, other than that when you import it, it gives you this poem. And <laughs> the poem talks about how they prefer their code and how there should only be one way to do things, except there's exceptions. It's it's really interesting how they approach things. There we go. So is but, is the poem just a um, like a sort of bonus that you get when you import this, or is this the poem? This is the poem. Okay, that's all. That's all you got. <laughs> okay, I wasn't when sure that was like. This, when there's you nothing import, like the Python this language. That I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But so this, this is do... not the whole language. This is well, considering the poem is called <laughs> the Zen of Python, <laughs> I can see the enlightenment that's going on here, right? Yes. Uh, the Zen of Python. Yes. So, cool. Yes. So okay. This gives you an, an idea on that. All right, let's go back to why Azure Notebooks. Normally, this will let us run. I don't know why it's not running right now. This notebook's not happy. But let's go down. So note-taking in Jupyter. Um, what's nice about Jupyter is it's used a lot in like science and math presentations. So you get funky math equations like this guy. Oops. Yeah, I don't even want to take a shot at what that means. Like, um, boo, over my head. So I can't even tell you, but I can tell you if I go to this link. That here's a guide to all their different things that they can do. And I can go down to latex equations, and there's that equation. How about that? Okay. All right. Maybe one if, of our viewers knows how to interpret that that one at the top. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, so if you're in math and science and have to deal with LaTeX at all, uh, that uses MathJax under the covers, and this link is included in the slide deck as well of how to do this formatting. That's usually a dollar sign on either side, and then MathJax takes over from there. Wow. Yeah, it's like Markdown for math, which exactly you know, is great because I don't know how many years it's been since you know like multiplication for me is the asterisk key yep. but that's not very realistic <laughs> so at, at least the, not letter x <laughs> sure sure but I, I like how here it's really really you know something that you'd find in your math book can be expressed Absolutely. and then and then it can be rendered pretty cool yeah and I have this page, I come to this page often when I'm looking at math equations because I'm like, I have no idea how to do latex again. It's not, I haven't done that since college and that was many moons ago. But, but yeah, so you can do math stuff. Um, Azure Notebook specifically has F sharp, but by default, right. so if I start, let me start Jupyter Notebooks here. So what you don't see is I have Jupyter Notebooks running on my machine locally because, well, I work with this stuff. Uh, local host. While you're switching that, I'm thinking, so it has F sharp, but there's no C sharp in Jupyter Notebooks, huh? That Not seems like here. I'd be well, on board with that, you know? So let's so, look at this yeah. Jupyter kernels list because I thought that there was a C sharp. There it is. I C sharp. So there is a project called .NET Interactive. Oh, yes. that's true. Yeah. That that is. I yeah. I don't I don't really want to speak too much for .NET Interactive because I've only it's a little bit like I was saying earlier about Azure Notebooks is I've only seen the the synopsis. Mm -hmm. But what did you uh, say before? Wait, you saw the back of the. I said I saw the back of the back of the t-shirt. I, I didn't even want to say that I got the t-shirt because it wasn't that. It was like it's like you see someone in the crowd and you say, "Oh, look." Yeah. Azure Notebooks. That looks cool. I yeah. wish I would have gone to that concert, you know, like that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I was um, just thinking about that concert. Wait, did you just make that up, the back of the t-shirt thing? Yeah, I just made or it Is up. that a phrase? Like, I've never heard that before. I That's better it. than Gomez's Law. It is. Wait, what's Gomez's Law? I mean, I don't know. It's the law. <laughs> if, wait, if you don't, I mean, honestly, I don't want to be rude to a, a guest of ours because we always want to put them on a pedestal. 
But if you don't know what Gomez's law is, I mean, you I've know, I thought we were bringing in a experts. cave. Come on, bring it's, me it's, into the it's fold. Because I, it's because I teach people about Git, and as I teach them about <laughs> branches, I tell them that I, I tell them that the longer you wait to delete a branch, the less certain you will feel about actually deleting it. And Especially because actually on how you named that branch, and I decided I would just name it <laughs> Gomez's law. Because I figured I, I deserve one, you know, like Plank has a constant and Occam has a razor. So I figured I'm teaching about Git. So I might as well tell people, don't wait too long to delete those feature branches or later you will all get together and wonder if you should delete it. Is so, it safe to delete this or no? Yeah, when did I, I create this? What is in this branch? I think so, I yeah. just figured out what Schwam, Schwami's law is, by the way, because I wanted a law for a while. And I know I'm sidetracking us here, but I want a law. And I think right. I came up with one. Schwami's law says that when you press the stream button, chaos will ensue. <laughs> With the Sudoku corollary of if Sudoku's <laughs> present, chaos is present. <laughs> so I like this. So Jupyter yeah. Notebooks it, uh, is is also supported separately from Azure, and, and Python and R were built in. You also mentioned yeah. Julia. Julia um, as well, but I haven't actually seen any demos of Julia, so I can't really speak right. to it. The, but what, then, the, it's yeah. part of the name. But then on Azure, you've got F Sharp. And to Andy's point, mm -hmm. I am I am hoping that we talk to somebody about .NET Interactive soon. Yeah. But I'm not quite ready to say that we have that lined up. So I just don't want to, you know, it is it's a topic that I'm very interested in and is a great, great follow up to this. So yeah, that would be really good. <laughs> and then I actually have Jupyter installed on my machine right now, and a base install is just Python. I don't have any of the other kernels loaded. Okay. Yeah. And just so everybody can see, you know, you're local, it's localhost 8888. Mm -hmm. So Jupyter's running and then you can start using it right here locally. But you said loading other kernels. That's interesting. Yeah. So let me go back to that list. So there are different ling other languages that Jupyter can support. Um, some of these, I have no idea what they even are. <laughs> but, but if you go there, R, there's a Haskell, it? a Ruby. Well... <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended on that no one. I know intended. what R is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a JavaScript, a TypeScript? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, the problem with these is that some of them are probably still maintained and some may not be maintained. Let's okay. just see if they're still being maintained. Elixir? Uh, there's Perl. Like PHP. Elixir, Perl. PHP. It's a lot of Bash. stuff you, you could do. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it just, you keep going. There's Lua. There's PyLua. There's all sorts of things on here. Prolog. Uh, yeah, if you want to learn a language, Jupyter is a way to go. Yeah, yeah. And and I wonder, could you install Jupyter on a machine and that maybe is available to a to a class you were going to mm -hmm. instruct? Which is and getting us a little away from <laughs> Azure Notebooks, but still. But it's <laughs> I like, still, it, it's, I like it's the concept. Yeah, yeah I and really the thing like is, this. With these, so if I go back to my localhost port 8888, whoa, there's a J in localhost. That is uh, that's the new J. spelling. It's a silent <laughs> J. It's a silent, yeah. <laughs> Local host. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. All right. Yeah, I mean, if I come in here, you can sound three. Uh, uh, I could set this up on a server somewhere and have people connect in very easily. And just so you can see, import this works regardless. So okay. this yeah. is run locally. Yeah. Oh, this is, you so, know, yeah, go ahead, Andy. <laughs> no, so so that, I, again, we're just using this as an example, this import this. But mm -hmm. that that came from the Python kernel, right? That was like local. Like it didn't go yeah. out to the cloud and download something. But I assume no, no, you could no, do no. that if you... Here. Let me but show I'm you saying I, I assume you could do that if you wanted to as well, right? Like you could make like requests out for data and you know more like. Oh yeah, you can use URLs. You can do web scraping and all that fun stuff. But yeah, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, let's see if this comes back. The slides for presenting data results. The main thing I use Jupyter Notebooks for nowadays is, is uh, data results. And so can you can you expand upon that a little bit? Like what do you, sure. what do you mean by that? Yeah. So 
I'm working on a, a course for stage three talent. That's who I work for. And we're doing a, a approach of data science for the normal person. You don't need oh, a PhD yeah. to look at data and to, to visualize it. Um, it's actually fairly straightforward. Uh, so I'm, let me show you. So what I've got here is I've got some data from a website called Kaggle. Kaggle has data. It has Jupyter Notebook things here. Let's open up Kaggle. Yeah, I, I want to see this. Because it is free data. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, that's cool. If you want if you want data, this is where to go. And like I came here, this is where the Animal Crossing data came from. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. It See, was I got nice. a guy. I get my data from a guy. This guy, like there's this bridge. You go down below, and if you know the right, you know, they'll point you at the direction of this guy. He's a little shady. Does he have a but, trench coat uh, with pockets yes, on yes. the inside? That this guy. This is my data guy. He can get me all kinds of different data, but it would be so much easier to just go to the web. Just go like, to the web. Like Avoid oh, the alleys, man. <laughs> Yeah. Especially nowadays with COVID, do you know what's That's in the That's right. Alley? I don't want to really see that guy. Yeah. He may be sick. So what's oh, nice with <laughs> what's nice with Kaggle is you can see what's part of the data set. Like these have four different CSVs. And I the one I like using for our demos here tonight are going to be items.csv. But it shows you all the different columns. And this person ended up making sure to put actual comments for the columns some people don't do that some people it's here's some gross data that we're just going to throw out there um, but this is actually done really well but i can see things like okay what are the different data types um, i can come over here on the summary and expand that out 27 string three integer three date time two other and i can click on those uh where are they so I could actually of those go, data sets I used to do when I was learning, like machine learning. I forget the website. It was some like university or something like that. But they always had these mm -hmm. data sets, and they describe them in a very similar way. This how many columns, how many strings, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And look at over here on the left, underneath the data. There's this link called notebooks. What do you suppose these are? Mm. Okay. Kaggle notebooks are nothing more than Jupyter notebooks. <laughs> I'll show you the um, sensors notebook just so you can see what this looks like. So I am in the Kaggle interface, but preparing your notebook, that's a common Jupyter prompt. Hmm. OK. So the notebooks thing is pretty consistent. Like the stuff yes. you learn with Azure notebooks is really it's just their version of notebooks, right? It's not, I mean, I'm sure there's some different, you know, differences, but all those mm -hmm. core concepts are going to apply to anywhere you want to use notebooks on your desktop over here at Kaggle. Yeah. Most of these are just Jupyter notebooks, either stripped down or actually just tossed in the cloud. In this particular one here, like, uh, there's pandas. It? That's like a popular, uh, library. A, yeah. Py uh, popular Python data library. Let's see if it's going to run. There it goes. It's 2.3 million records in this particular data set. Um, and the data set hey. we're working with here is one that I actually contributed to the community. Um, we I have I saw your face on there. Yeah. Yeah. So I have, let's go back to the data set so you can see where that is. Leave editor. I'm fine. Hey, right Kevin now. Griffin's here. Hey, Kev, how are you? What up, Kev? Thanks for joining us. And Jason's back this week. Jason's I see Jason. Regular. Now, how are you, Jason? Now, now, Sarah, Kevin asked, he said he was a little late, so he asked if you could maybe start from the beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get on that. Do, do, does do, that do, mean do. If, if we start we from the come. beginning, does Kevin have to sit through us like Mixer was broken and we waited for all that? <laughs> and, you know, like, you don't want to yeah. go to the beginning, Kevin. You don't want to go all the way back. Yeah, and you, know I mean, what, Kevin, it, you, you just missed slides going up and down. Yeah. Stuff like that. But that's okay because, you know, to our, our friend Kevin Griffin, who was on last week, if you want to see him talking about logic apps, or if he wants to watch from the beginning, where where would he go? He would go to mm -hmm. our video archive, right, which is at uh, video.thedevtalkshow.com. So if you're watching right now on Mixer, on Twitch, or on YouTube, or you're watching in the future, and you're on YouTube, and you want to see more, then catch uh, all of the replays on video at video.thedevtalkshow.com. So yeah, Kaggle is pretty cool here because now we're mixing we're mixing you've got Jupyter notebooks 
Mm-hmm. And and like you were saying, it's interactive. It's great for exploring data. And I loved how in your notebook, you were showing how, how you just start exploring the data. Like, well, how many sensor data points are there to begin with? You just explore it. Just boom. Absolutely. Done. Absolutely. And then, yeah. Marry it with data. This is cool. Yeah. Like I said, this particular data set is the one that I released out in the world. 2.3 million records. Um, temperature and humidity sensor data from our house from 2016 till April. I think it's like April 9th, 2020. So fairly old to fairly recent. But you want to see how temperature is trending over time? Go right at ahead. At your house. Yeah. At, at your my house. house. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because I was see? wondering. <laughs> my office is the cold room. <laughs> so you'll figure out which one is mine by watching those trends. There you go. But yeah, Kaggle, I mean, we had ramen. I found a ramen raider thing. I was talking to you guys about this earlier. I posted something on LinkedIn last week, I think it was, about ramen and how it got rated. This is really? the the notebook I used to do all the analysis. And I can take a look at these graphs. Uh, let me scroll here. And I can like right click on the graph, save image as. So I can use this to generate all my images for presentations. And if I don't want to show the code, I don't have to. I can just embed my images like I did in my LinkedIn post. So you're so, using a Python library to generate that graph? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, this there's is all um, kinds of cool stuff like for presentation of the yeah. data in notebooks. I've seen that before. Yeah, so this one I'm using pandas. I'm also using Matplotlib. Right. That's a popular one too, obviously, mm-hmm. right? That's, yeah. And I think this one, if I scroll down further, yeah, then I start <laughs> using Seaborn to make it look pretty too. Seaborn's another one of those libraries which has a prettier background, not so MATLAB looky. MATLAB looky. That's good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That was a technical term. I love it. It is no, a very I, technical I term. I really like how you just explored to make this, right? Like mm-hmm. you you probably, you know, I'm trying to read your mind as to what happened here, but you printed out the ramen ratings and then said, well, I wonder what it would look like if I plotted them out. Right. Well, it's just for, so neat. And for me, I always like looking at data and going, okay, what are the stories that this data has to tell? And like this particular one, this box plot, I was curious to see, based on the different ramen types, are they getting rated differently? Like, are, are cup ramens versus bowl versus pack? Is one better than the other? How are they getting rated? So I can see that the low ratings are there, but they're mostly high ratings. And a bar of ramen is delicious, but the can of ramen was not so much. And there are stories for those. The bar of ramen was a chocolate bar that was released a while ago. Supposedly the guy rated it really high. It was delicious. The can was a ramen-flavored Pringles chip, and he only rated it three and a half. So. Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it is his taste. Sounds, but, yeah, sounds appropriate, really. But I mean, it's one of those that I start. I look at the data, and I'm like, okay, let me scroll back up at the top how I usually start. So I look at the data and go, what's in here? How does this work? What kind of data do I have to work with? Then I come into something like this where I do the presentation. And so for our example, I used the cattle, the animal processing data set. I used pandas. And I said, pandas, give me the CSV file and store it in what they call a data frame. And that's what it did. That's cool. Yeah. And then what's nice is I can drill even further. How many items are in the items.csv file? Well, there's 4,565. And then I go into things like, OK, what are the different categories? And what are the most populated categories? And so this is how I do it. I, I take my, my data set. I grab the column. I see how frequent those values appear for that column. And then I sort it for the highest to lowest. I grab just the top 10 of those because there's a lot of records in there. And then let's see if this is going to scroll over nicely or not. There we go. Mm. You can see then I give it a title. title. Yeah. Yeah. And here you're seeing the code and the output from the code. This is one of those things that Jupyter Notebook does with the Rise slideshow. So you you said that you're um, putting together a presentation for your company about like, I forget what you called it, but like data science for, you know. We're doing a, a, a full course like, yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. How, 
Is that a course that's like available? I don't know what your company is. Like, is that available sure. to me, that course? Because that sounds kind of interesting, honestly. <laughs> so that so stage three talent, that's who I work for. Um, based out of Georgia, but most of us are remote anyhow. Um, we're gearing our, our, our goals to get to the people who are in stage three of their career. They're not going to school. They, they've already done the school thing. They've already put a few years in the field, and now they're like, okay, I need to sharpen my skills or I need to get new skills. And so, yeah, if you're interested in this, I have some information. Uh, we can always reach out to contact at stage3talent.com, and they will get you more information about the data engineering course. So mm -hmm. we're getting ready to beta test it, and then the full course will come out later this year. Nice. Good luck with that. That sounds cool. Yeah, so I'm excited because it, I get to play with this more and more and more. <laughs> Yeah, I really like how this just comes up right there. I and mean, if you were to, to change something on it, mm -hmm. it would just show up for us, which is just so... Let's say I wanted to flip my axes and I don't want my buy value on my... Comparing to see if there's a relationship between buy and sell. So yeah, if I just okay. Say sell and buy. Let's see if it's going to refresh or if it's just being finicky. Oh, I... Okay, well, but it refreshed, actually, right? <laughs> it, it did. So hold on. If I go back up to where we said read it in. You know what happened? I can tell you exactly what happened. I moved it into a data folder. Oh. And I didn't import pandas since as you PD. you refreshed it, you didn't, yeah, okay. So I can come back in here and say import pandas as PD. There it goes. There we go. See now, uh, I, you know what I like about that? The live the live problem and the live debugging, and she just yes. pulled it off Effortless, effortlessly. Easy for me to say, right? <laughs> we knew she. We knew she could handle that. I mean, that's oh, why yeah. she's here, right? I mean, that's you know, that was cool. Know. Yeah, pot just, so, is there such a thing as like breakpoints and things like that in here? Or is that not a? Is that not a like a, a not thing that belongs in the to language? Not not in the Azure notebooks. If you're working with Python and IDE, then we could set breakpoints like we would do in any other IDE. Um, but I haven't found breakpoints yet in Jupyter notebooks. Okay. So yet, because there's always that yet. Yep. Yep. This isn't drawing the graph for some reason. That probably along the lines of the import this. But yeah, it should just update well, it. It says this may take a moment. So maybe it's taking a moment. <laughs> maybe. Uh... Well, I mean, you know, I I I, I got you to, to, yeah. to destroy that there, but but it yeah. looks pretty good though. I liked how, you know, you come to this slide, the code is there, it's already plotted, mm -hmm. and then in certain, you know, in the last slide, you made a change, it came right up. Yep. And again, you know, this is just, you know, I'm, I put you on the spot, which is pretty unfair. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this is cool because. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's fired right now. By the way, this is Chris's no. last show. Thanks, Chris. No, it's been no, great no. working with you. Live coding <laughs> and live breaking things is what I do. It's yeah. one of those because the way you break things, then you debug it, it's pretty easy to go from there. I mean, you saw I didn't import pandas. I had a stack trace that yelled at me. It was like, hey, you're really forgetting to bring in what PD is. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what we like to do here. We have a couple shows in our archive where we spent an hour trying to, <laughs> before we remembered that in Linux, the the subdirectory slashes go the other direction. Yeah. But you, but, but you know. <laughs> That's a thing. Notice here, these are the forward slashes. Yeah. So, but yeah, this this whole presentation is this Jupyter notebook under the covers. All I did was click this enter, exit, rise slideshow to start it. So, so that's interesting, right? So you didn't like design a slideshow. This is just the notebook. This is the it, notebook. The thing I actually had to do for the slides, let me scroll. Is right here, slide type. So okay. I have to say, is this a slide? Is this a sub slide? Oh, is each this one I don't you even decide. See? Okay. Yeah. But but the point is, you can always go back to this like regular mm -hmm. Jupyter notebook view, which yep. sometimes makes even more sense. Like depending on what you're working on, you want to see those yes. steps like all in a row. And so it's not a different entity. It's it's the same exact thing. It's the just same entity with a different view of it, which is yes. which is even cooler. I didn't realize that. Um, at the, I didn't quite realize that. You probably said it and I missed it, but you know.
No, so if I go back to my local, uh, it should be already part of the local at this point as well. And I didn't. So let me go here. Should. Oh, this one doesn't have it. I think we might have to install it. It might be part of the NB extensions. So Jupiter. Uh, so if we do Jupiter and look up NB extensions. There we go. Speaking of extensions. Uh... Yeah, I see Herb has posted that there's an extension to do debugging in the notebook. I'm going to have to yeah, check that out. That figures, right? You know, thanks yeah. for sharing that with us. Thanks, Herb. And that's the great thing, right? Is a lot of times we get somebody right in the chat saying, hey, here's the thing that you're you're missing, <laughs> which is super exactly. helpful. We don't know everything, right? And, no. and so it's so great that that's what community is about. That's what this show is about, is, you know, about like working together. And we help each other on things, and uh, it's great to have you know people participate. Yeah. So there yeah. it is. Rise is. Yeah, just, rise is, is what it, you want. Is it built into Azure Notebooks? It is built into Azure Notebooks. Okay. I didn't so have to you... do anything for Azure Notebooks. I've yeah, had it okay. once on localhost, but I've installed it on so many different laptops. But yeah, it's the enter exit rise slideshow. Hmm. Yeah. It makes life a lot easier for going, hey, look at this cool thing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, I, I wonder if or would wish for the ability to install some of these kernels or extensions, um, not quite still learning kind of the names of this <clears throat> into Azure notebooks. So that would be amazing to say, hey, we want to do some JavaScript in there, um, you know, and try that that JavaScript library or something or mm -hmm. just anything. I, I, well, I, I have a feeling that this is still growing because like yes. we were saying earlier, we know that there's .NET Interactive. We know mm -hmm. that that's a thing. Um, so I'm just happy to admit that I don't know everything about notebooks, but sure know a lot more now than I did just uh, just under an hour ago. Yeah, so. and keep in mind that there's this keyword up here, preview. Ooh. So <laughs> we know what that means with Microsoft. It could be in preview for a few years, right? But you never know. I, I mean, the say, amount it's of work been in preview a while, that's for sure. It has, yeah. The, the amount of work that gets done in Jupyter Notebooks, mm -hmm. you know, this is your, this is like cool, um, you know, sort of presentation for like people like us that you know we don't we don't use these things regularly, and that's all really cool. But the amount of like data science that gets done in Jupyter Notebooks is like you know mind boggling, right? I mean, it's just oh, yeah. a lot of in that in that. Uh, in that world, you know, data science, you know, they would they would be confused looking at C sharp and and a Visual Studio type of IDE. Mm -hmm. This is the IDE. This is the this is the go to uh, yep. model, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. This is their this is what they work in, and it's when I teach Python. So I do a, a user group talk. I do Python for C sharp devs. I end up using a Jupyter Notebook. I try to use Jupyter Notebooks as much as I can because they are that easy to work with. And yeah, this has been in preview at least a while because you can see some of this stuff was created back in 2018. So yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been around a while. C -sharp devs. That sounds like a future show. We might have we might have somebody on, I don't know who, to tell us to teach Python to us C-sharp devs, right? I would Absolutely. like to see that. If we yeah. knew somebody, Oh, we if only, only knew someone. somebody. <laughs> Friend maybe of the somebody, show. Cool. Maybe somebody who would come back to the show. Absolutely, yeah. Could Just be our let first me know when. Guest. Yeah, I like that. This is a fun crew. Yeah, I and this it. is way better than last week's show. Uh, that Kev Griff <laughs> guy, man, he's brutal. <laughs> poor, poor Kevin. Kevin's in chat. That's oh, only because he's here. Fun. That's only because he's here. We had a great <laughs> show with him, too. <laughs> I like how he put it. Yeah, this is going to change completely next week at Build. Probably, yeah. knowing yeah. my luck. Right. Well, oh, Build yeah, is next week. All your talks. And in fact, Build is a special uh, online only, only event. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be going on while we do our show next week, Wednesday at 8.30 uh, U.S. Eastern Time, 8.30 p.m. So... Um, I actually can't tell you what's going to be going on at that time. I don't know if any of us can. I think we're going to see a schedule pretty soon. Hopefully soon. And uh, it'll be a pretty interesting version of Build. So, you know, by the time we get here next Wednesday, Rich, Andy, and I may have a whole lot of updates about what is going on in the Microsoft developer world. Uh, that's, that's all 
mysterious and yeah. Oh my build up Microsoft.com. You know, I saw some stuff on Twitter that people were getting like swag from build. Did any of you guys get that stuff? Like no. you have to register. I, I registered too late. I believe the early registrants did get that swag, which is pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. that looked kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, it's neat that um you know, Microsoft's trying to to make it as personal as they can, considering the situation and the challenge that they've put this all together yeah. so quickly. So yeah. cool. pretty neat. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking forward to build next week where we will be live during build. Um, but this week, you know, this was super awesome. Um, I don't want to presume if there's another feature or, or anything left that Maybe the, the killer feature you've been saving till the end. I mean, I love looking at Rise. Rise yeah. is pretty cool. Uh, Rise was the one that I was like, I have to show you all because this is one of those. Yeah, I'm going to do a presentation. And oh, yeah, by the way, the tool I'm, I'm running this presentation on is the tool I'm talking to you about. <laughs> I right. love doing that. Yeah. Love doing that. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. something special about this. And I have a feeling that, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think like uh, hands on labs or or just interactive follow along, um, especially because I think I saw a clone button up there. So I mm -hmm. feel like there's this real potential to kind of have the the notebook set up in a in like a, like ready to go state. And then you say to everybody, OK, clone the notebook and let's follow along and learn uh, you know, whatever we're working. Absolutely. So, yeah, Chris, absolutely. the amount of hands on labs you do, I think. There's something that would be really cool. I mean, you'd have to figure it all out, and, you know, yeah. see how the C sharp thing works and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. Seems like cool possibilities. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I find what works is putting like your question or your description in a, a markdown. Leave a blank code cell for them to fill it in and continue from there. Mm. I love it. I love it. This yeah. was pretty cool. I, I now. I kind of get a lot more of it, kind of, you know, interactive coding, but also there's this wonderful presentation ability. And it's and I really like that interactive feel because, you know, since um since we had um, Stashu on, I've been experimenting a little bit with F sharp and I and and I did this tried to do it the same way. We're working in the REPL and mm -hmm. that experience is here. So since I've been playing with that lately, like I yeah. look at this and say, oh, wow, it's cool. It's more of the same of what I've been doing. So yeah, you get the interaction uh, right there in the notebook and it's all captured in one spot. You don't have to be like how I do where I write notes in a, an actual notebook and then translate it later. No, I just keep it all on Jupiter. Yeah, just all in one spot. It, it, Jupiter, watch out OneNote, watch out GitHub Markdown, right? Oh, actually. Wait, Wait a minute. There's there's one more feature. Okay, oh. cool. Cool. Because you're mentioning time. not watch planned. Out OneNote. Not it's, planned. It's, no, I, no, no. I said something though and I love it. I triggered something, so. Yeah, you said no watch out OneNote, watch out all these. The export of an uh, a Jupyter notebook is really cool too because I can do file and then I can say download as. Do I want to download the notebook file? Do I want to export it to HTML? Ooh. Rise uses Reveal JS under the covers, so okay. do I want my slides in HTML format? Yeah, yeah, Kevin. But wait, there's more. Okay, that did look familiar. Reveal JS, and except without all the hassle of figuring out Reveal JS. Exactly. So let's you know, see. I just downloaded yeah. the HTML. And usually we charge extra for this bonus content, but we're throwing this in tonight. <laughs> uh, it didn't do well with that markdown, but this is straight HTML in that. So what, what happens to the data? Like, is it is it preloading things that it would do data? Like, how could it do import this? What would happen? It won't be able to in, in this particular it, right? export. Okay, yeah. But if I tell it to run all of my, so if I go up to uh, tell it cell run all, so I have all my outputs there, and yeah, then I do then the export. export. That's what I was then thinking. Then my so data we'll, will be captured. That's really cool. And I can download it as PDF via LaTeX, LaTeX. It, so many formats. It's awesome. It makes it easy for me to do. No, the other likes thing. That. Bruno other likes thing, it, I think. What is that an icon of? A cat? What is that? I can't even tell. Yeah, I think Bruno Lines. likes that a lot. Lines are shot. <laughs> and then I guess the one last thing. Yeah, there's checkpoints. I don't really cover those because that gets to be crazy where you can just like a virtual machine you can save a checkpoint and then you're like i don't like this let's go back to one of those you can do that in jupyter notebooks i don't have a cool demo for that though 
Um, but I can do this close and halt at the end. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because we are running right now. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can leave it. We are running right now in the cloud, which means somebody's got to do the compute. Okay, oh, so there's yeah. a compute behind it. All right, that's good to know. I'm in the free tier, so I'm not really as concerned. But just so you can see, if I go in here, you can see I'm running on free compute. Okay. All right. So I want to say shut down. Yes, I'm free compute, but get a good habit to shut it down. Yeah, I really, I could run it on direct compute if I really needed to. So. Okay. Was so this, for, and this was auto saving as you typed things, wasn't it? It was auto saving. Um, it also has the save button, so you can click the save button. But I usually use the auto save or control S. Hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. So save. There's checkpoints there. If you say, "Hey, I really want to save this before I'm," you know, if you're me, before I mess it up. Uh, <laughs> this is a good spot. I'm going to save and checkpoint yeah. it. Notice yeah. it says checkpoint created. All right, there we go. There's a connected to so the kernels there, yeah. and then I could say something like, "You know what? Forget this. This is Azure Notebook is boring." <laughs> boring and you're like no you know no 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 right. no so let's go back to the one at 941 and yeah, yeah we really want to cool. revert it and it changes it that's pretty cool yeah love it i so, love yeah. it so cool. hey you know um we've seen a lot we've seen folks we've got some old friends here tonight which is great thank you for joining us we really appreciate that you're here on twitch um you know, whether you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, uh, if you're watching in the future or you want to see some of our past shows, uh, make sure that you head to the video archive, which is um, just at video.thedevtalkshow.com. And um, Andy, I, I know, you know, you stream uh, your scheduled streams on Wednesdays, right? And did you have I didn't know if you had something specific about that or do we just want to make sure we tell everybody that they pay attention to Schwam uh, Schwami. I was going to say. I, gonna say, I almost said Schwammy. Like I almost went back to the <laughs> press your luck. He always gets my name wrong. <laughs> no whammies, um, no whammies, no schwammy, no schwammy. No, shwam no, it's yeah. Don't get him <laughs> no. started, Sadooki. Don't get him started. I actually wanted to plug something, but it had nothing to do with uh, my personal stream, actually. Um, but what I did want to say, I don't, I don't know if you mentioned it, if you're new to our show here, please uh follow us, you know, on Twitch, follow us if you're on Mixer, uh subscribe, you know, all the <coughs> <clears throat> all those kind of things. I want to give a plug to uh, an event that's coming up, and I'm going to paste a uh, a link into the chat. Uh, I am going to be part of a virtual conference on, um, and if if we want to share a screen, maybe we, I I don't know if you want me to share it or something like that. June fifth, our friends at C yeah okay. Let me uh, bring that over here, and I'll I will share. Uh, let's see. Where's my share button? Hang on. There it is. They keep hiding it on you. Um, I guess I want this one. Let's see. Hopefully I'm going to get the right screen. Um, okay. So now you should be seeing chaos, right? Here we go. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so our friends at C-Sharp Corner have been doing these virtual conferences. They did one in uh, like a week ago on... Uh, you know, presentation skills and things like that it was really good. It was really good. And you can go back and look on their, I guess, on their YouTube channel, which I don't, I don't know what it is, but we could probably find it and look back on those. So on June 5th, we're doing a, a software architect virtual conference. And of course, our friend Mahesh, I'm sure everybody knows Mahesh, the founder of C Sharp Corner, asked me to be involved. I was really flattered. There's a great lineup of, of presenters. Um, and a uh, great lineup of presenters. And you can see the agenda here. So there's going to be uh, content all for like sort of becoming a software architect or being a software architect. Uh, Joe's doing a session on uh, application and web architects. I'm doing some stuff on design principles and, and standards. And uh, we've got, there's a session on microservices and um, Vishwas is doing one on uh, cloud applications, et cetera. So, you know, you could see what's going on here. And the last one they did was just really well uh, produced. And I really liked the way Mahesh ran it. They did a little chat in between each one of the sessions and, and tried to make it inclusive and fun. And um, 
and I enjoyed it. And I, I guess I, I'm, I'm flattered to be included in this next one. So I hope people will uh, register. There must be a link that you can register for this, but it's free. It's on Twitch and I think Facebook and all these other places where you can stream and, and things like that. So um, check out the link. I put it in the uh, in the chat. And uh, I just cool. figured awesome. I'd, I'd help out with a little plug there, you know. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's coming up in a, in a little under a month. So yeah, pretty cool, Andy. Looking forward to that. And uh, and then, like we said, next week is build. And don't forget if you're if you're curious about future events. Um, for now, we are publishing them on Meetup um, for as long as Meetup will have us, <laughs> because Meetup's allowing virtual events right now. And uh, and our website is at thedevtalkshow.com. And then I think. Uh, what else? We also um, we also do announcements sometimes on Twitter, right? So Twitter's just uh, the Dev Talk Show. Make sure you see us there. So I want to thank our our special guest. Um, oh wait, was there something else? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah, I can do it right now. You want me to open it up? Yeah, here we go. Since I'm still sharing this one. Yeah. Okay, right out of Microsoft Learn. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't look like it's a big uh, time commitment either. Like they show you, you know, five minutes, five minutes. So you can really get into this stuff and learn it uh, pretty quickly. Great. That's good to nice. know. Uh, yeah, nice. thanks. No, that's good. OK, so I've got a Microsoft Learn course to do and some Azure notebooks to start. And, you know, I don't know that I would have ever started on the path of uh, Azure notebooks if we didn't have uh, Sarah Dikevich on tonight, who is better known as Saduki. And you should follow her on Twitter. Uh, just look for Saduki. You will you will not find someone greater excitement for learning and passion for teaching. So really glad that you joined us. And um, we're, we're, we'll, I have a feeling that we'll have you back to look at some of these other uh, some of these other things that you're working on, because, you know, you're always working on something new. That's what's so awesome about having you here. It's fun. The, you know, where I work, they keep me busy between the data engineering stuff and API stuff. I'm doing some API documentation. It's it's fun. I actually like what I do. I like the people that I work with, I like the clients that I'm working on. So yeah, I'm excited and I do want to talk more when I can. Yeah, and you know what they say? They say that if you're having that much fun, then it's not work at all. I believe that is that is what we say, right? So Don't tell them, we, we want them to still pay us, right? But, you know. <laughs> There's that. There's right. that. So I want to thank, you know, a lot of you folks in the chat that showed up, you know, we've got our some of our friends like Jason was here and we appreciate that you show up every week and Bruno who has been with our community for quite a while now from one of the very right one of the first uh people who followed our community out here in philly and has come over to the dev talk show with us and we saw kevin griffin out there and um got Jason. some great answers from people yeah so thank you for joining us in the chat and if you're watching us in the future on youtube then come watch us live on wednesdays at 8 30 p.m us eastern because then you can join in this conversation you can ask questions tell us your opinion on things we want to hear from you leave comments here on this youtube video if you like this topic hit the like button that way we'll know that these are the kinds of topics you want to see and you know if you want to make sure you're notified when a new video goes up make sure you hit subscribe right here on the uh, video.thedevtalkshow.com so once again thank you sarah for being here it was super awesome oh, it's great seeing you me. 
Yeah, it's really good to see you. So just like, uh, and we'll see you again soon. Sorry that we didn't get to see you at MVP Summit. And, you know, just because we, we did it, we did we did that from home this year. And you know what? Someday soon we will all be back together and that will be great. So until then. I look then, forward to that. Virtually, yeah. though. For now. Yeah. Yeah. Until then, we did see each other at the, the super awesome meta conference. That was great. So, um, and that's. That's one of the cool things that, that we do at Summit where the, the, the folks who organize conferences get together and talk about how to improve, right? Yep. So in any case, um, for my co-host Andy Schwamm and Rich Ross who make everything happen behind the scene, I want to thank you all for being here and we will see you next Wednesday right here on the Dev Talk Show. <laughs>